In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. In the traditional Latin Mass calendar, there are actually two days upon which we remember, prayerfully meditate upon the sorrows of the Blessed Mother, namely the Friday before Good Friday, and of course, September 15th, the great feast of Our Lady of Sorrows. The feasts of Holy Church not only focus in on persons, but also on mysteries, such as the mysteries of the Annunciation, the Transfiguration, the Immaculate Conception, the Ascension, and so many, many others. And so Mary's sorrows are a mystery. Her sufferings are a mystery that accomplish something in union with Christ. In short, Mary's purest tears, united with the most precious blood of our Lord, her compassion, united with his passion, her immaculate heart, pierced with the sword of sorrow, united with the sacred heart, being pierced by the spear of St. Longinus. Her standing at the foot of the cross, together with his hanging upon the cross, And yes, her co-redemption united with his work of redemption. After the Mass on Friday, the Mass of the pre-sanctified, we call it, we walked Our Lady home. We walked Our Lady home. We accompanied Our Lady of Sorrows, seeking to console her after the brutal death of her only child, her Savior, and yes, her very God. It was a quiet and it was a somber procession from the church to the rectory, led by a priest named after the Holy Apostle, charged with taking care of Our Lady, who was to be a mother to him and to Holy Church. It was a procession to the rectory, to the house of priests. We then all made one last visit to Our Lady, seeking to console her immeasurable sorrows. Although there is one and only one Redeemer, namely Christ our Lord, he allows his perfect mother to unite with him in the work of redemption itself. At this parish, the priests, without exception, will always defend Mary as co-redemptrix. For we simply follow the church. Pope Benedict XV, of holy and happy memory, teaches this doctrine when he writes, quote, And uniting herself to the passion and death of her son, she suffered almost unto death, And as far as it depended upon her, she immolated, sacrificed her son. So it can be said that with him, she redeemed the human race, unquote. And Pope Pius XI, again of holy and happy memory, specifically used the term co-redemptrix. He stated the following... From the nature of his work, the Redeemer ought to have associated his mother with his work. For this reason, we invoke her under the title co-redemptrix. Words of Pius XI. The sorrows of Mary. The seven sorrows of Our Lady are a main focus for many of us in our devotional life. We call upon her all the time. And yet, we should not forget the seven joys of Our Lady. For this night, she is a joyful mother. Be joyful, Mary, heavenly queen, Gaudé Maria. Your son who died was living seen, Alleluia Laetare, O Maria. The son you bore by heaven's grace, Gaudé, 
Maria, did all our guilt and sin efface. Alleluia, letare, O Maria. The Lord has risen from the dead. Gaudé, Maria. He rose with might, just as he had said. Alleluia, letare, O Maria. Those seven joys of Our Lady bring us to light. And they lift our spirits at this dark time in human history, the history of the world. For Mary is the cause of our joy. That's one of her titles, cause of our joy. The seven joys are simple but meaningful. The first, the Immaculate Virgin joyfully conceived our Lord by the Holy Ghost. Two, she joyfully carried our Lord when she went to visit Elizabeth. Three, the Immaculate Virgin brought our Lord joyfully into the world, giving him birth. Number four, the Mother of God joyfully exhibited our Lord to the adoration of the Magi. Number five, the Immaculate Virgin Mary joyfully found our Lord in the temple. Number six, the Immaculate Virgin joyfully beheld our Lord after his resurrection. And finally, and so owed to her, the Immaculate Virgin was joyfully received by our Lord into heaven and crowned queen of heaven and earth and angels and men. On this holy night, or as the exalted puts it so well, hic noc est. This is the night of which it is written, the night shall be as bright as day, dazzling is the night for me, and full of joy and gladness. And on this night, remember that sixth joy of Our Lady, the joy of being the first to see the risen Lord. St. Vincent Ferrer, the great Dominican, also known as the angel of the last judgment because he preached that, he described the scene of Our Lady seeing our risen Lord. He writes, The Virgin Mary was most certain that her son would rise on the third day. Perfect faith. Perfect as he had predicted, he said it, but perhaps she did not know the very hour of his resurrection because it is not written that Christ had revealed the hour of his resurrection. So the Virgin Mary on this very night, which was so long for her, a long night, awaited the resurrection of her son and she began to think at which hour he would rise. After then preparing and reading the Psalms, this is descriptions of St. Vincent Ferrer of Our Lady, after she prayerfully reads the Psalms, she looked out the window and she saw the dawn breaking and she rejoiced saying, now my son is rising. Among other details, St. Vincent suggests that our Lord greeted his mother greeted her saying, peace be with you. And the virgin fell to her knees and weeping abundantly for joy, adored him, kissing his hands and feet saying, O blessed wounds, which have given me such pain on Good Friday. Christ kissing his mother, then said, my mother rejoice, because from now on you will have nothing but joy and celebration. You will have nothing but joy and celebration. In a powerful Easter sermon, the same priest, religious, St. Vincent Ferrer, said that many of the great theologians and the greatest mystics determined that after his resurrection, our Lord appeared first to Mary, his mother. First, St. Vincent says, by divine precept, because 
she suffered above all others in the passion of her son. Christ, he continues, by special privilege was born of his mother so that she gave birth without pain in Bethlehem. But all the pains of birth and death came over her in the passion of her son. That's when she felt it. Since Scripture says, again, Vincent Ferrer's thoughts, since Scripture says, honor your father and forget not the groaning and birth pangs of your mother, Christ most perfectly kept the law of honoring parents. And it follows that he appeared to his mother first, who endured sorrows more than all others. In another Easter sermon, same saint, Vincent Ferrer, elaborated on this reason, painting a vivid picture. He said, if indeed someone were overseas, just think of it, if someone were overseas, and his mother had understood that he had died overseas, and he nevertheless healthily returned and would visit first other friends, and only last come to his mother. This would not be a good son, nor would he seem to have honored his mother. St. Vincent cited another reason, the merit of her faith, the greatest faith of any individual ever. The merit of her faith. He said the text shows the apostles lost faith at the passion. There's no creed tonight. The apostles, the givers of the faith, they're in hiding. They're in a locked room. No creed tonight. They had lost faith. Only the Virgin Mary on that holy Saturday invariably believed. She believed. And because of this, on every Saturday, every Saturday, the office of the day, oftentimes the mass of the day, is celebrated in her honor. When therefore scripture says, the Lord shows himself to them who have faith in him. He shows himself to those who have faith in him. It seems that as a reward of merit for her faith, that he would appear to her first. But not just your faith, but also another reason he came to her first, the intensity of her love. No one has ever been loved by the good Lord being loved by our blessed mother than any other creature, all of the creatures combined. No one has ever loved God in terms of the creation than Our Lady. There never was a mother who loved her son more than Mary loved Christ. Then he quoted, St. Vincent Ferrer, quoted our Lord from St. John's Gospel. Quote, and he that loves me shall be loved by my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest, show myself to him. And these reasons, it is clear that he appeared to the Virgin Mother first, concluded St. Vincent Fair, Dominican priest. On Good Friday, we walked Our Lady of Sorrows home, and we sought to console her Immaculate Heart. But on this night, this day, we rejoice with her in the victory of her son. Be joyful, Mary, Heavenly Queen, Gaudet Maria. Your son who died was living seen. Alleluia, Laetare, O Maria. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen.